the first thing I think about when I think about use and serve and uh, the cooperative blueprint and how we're going to get to achieve all these great goals and they're really pretty noble things. So I think a, a co-op economy can be a transformative element and we're certainly at a point in history where we need a transformative element uh, with all the potential shocks coming and the changes in society and all the you know the peak resource things that we're going to deal with. So I think we're all on the same page there but how we get there is where that maybe we get a bit of mess. So I hope I can frame this a bit. Um, the first thing I think about is three different concepts that we have to have for strategic fit when we think about participation. Uh, first thing is a question of identity. Now we think um, about this in terms of the co-op model, but also the specific co-op that we're representing. This is a really important question if we're going to increase, whether it's use or serve or any of these other things, is what we're promoting a strategic fit for who we are at our core. This is sort of an inviolable thing you know, if you think about the co-op's identity. So this course sort of sets some boundaries and also some general direction. We might also think about a sense of cohesiveness, and this is something that I've learned from uh, Dr. Cote in my studies at MMCCU. So we, th we think about um, cohesiveness among members. I mean, obviously a lot of that's dealt with in own and, uh, and belong, so I'm not going to deal with that as much. But there are other levels of cohesion that are important and are uh, greatly associated with cooperative success, one being a cohesion between members and the enterprise. And this obviously is really critical when we think about the sense of are they going to use this or not. Do we have members that come in once a year? Do they come in once a week? What's the meaning behind that? Uh, so we want to make sure we have something that's really meeting people's needs and expressing their values in a compelling way if we're going to get there. The other thing we have to worry about is a strategic fit with the market. As much as we think, well, you know, it's our co-op and it's, it's sort of in a co-op land. This is not true. And I know if you're in Portland, you see new seasons growing all over the place. You see other models. And this is a competitive environment that we can't ignore. So what we might like to do could be bounded, uh, you know, both with opportunity and threat from that external environment. So we have to be aware of that. Um, so what does use um, and serve mean in this context? I think the first issue that comes out is growth. And growth is a word that uh, it gets maligned a lot, and I know it keeps coming up here. I'll just go ahead and say that uh, that's a consideration that's going to be different for each co-op. I'm not going to say there's a one-size-fits-all. I'm just going to say I'm just pro-growth in general. You know, uh, if we can get past the step of disaggregating that sense of global growth and peak resources, and think about what does growth actually mean on the ground at our co-op, which is a very different question, uh, then we might be able to address in terms of our identity and our fit for our co-op. Uh, but I will say that when we address this question, it might be good to think about quality and quantity as distinctive facets of growth. So we might say maybe, and I know there's uh, some stores, whether it's Davis and one of the locations of Food Front, that might sell some products that you don't see in natural foods all the time. You know, you may have, say, well, are we serving this community? Or are we violating our identity. That's a key question, isn't it? Um, sometimes uh, people want to be pragmatic and they say giving up the pawn is good because I can take the rook. But some people say that's a game we don't play. That's Each co-op has to address this. Um, at our co-op we're still working through those kind of issues to some degree. What's allowed and what isn't? Because these are very difficult questions. Um, but I do think that at the end of the day use has to be the foundation whether you're pro-growth or not. No margin, no mission. That's just the, the rest falls apart. As we heard from Michael Healy, we have this association uh, aspect of the cooperation, which is really important. But we also have an enterprise aspect. And if that falls, the other part cannot exist. So um, five minutes. Thank you. So I'm bad to get off time. Um, so this is something that has to have some attention. For me, for this to be meaningful and to go back to that sense of cohesion and identity, we have to think, what, what is it that our co-op makes us special? Let's infuse that into this. So if we're going to sell more things or sell the right things, we have to think about what, did it, what is it that people need and what do they value. And what we do at Central is sort of borrowed from a model that Tom Webb and some other folks developed uh, for cooperatives, specifically for marketing cooperatives. And it's called Marketing Our Cooperative Advantage, or we call MOCA. So that's not a, I know it's a coffee town up in Seattle, but uh, that's not really what it means. So we say MOCA, that's what we're referring to. And this is uh, not just so much a let's tell people about co-ops or let's you know, 
toot our horn or whatnot, but it really means that you invest in every activity you have in expressing that unique element that's your cooperative. So it may be that uh, your product policy does have to have some elements that might go against the market. That's a possibility if that's, if that's a, uh, something that has to happen. We may say that growth for growth's sake is not good enough. In the co-op model it says the fastest growing form of enterprise, but not at any cost, right? So we may say that it says also that we're going to be the preferred form of enterprise. We might think of how we can use serve in this regard because telling the co-op story is important for everyone to do. We're not going to be the model preferred by most people if they don't know what we are and if most people haven't heard of it. So this is an important thing to really think about as well and how we build that in, whether you're serving in a committee, on a board, or you're in operations. Um, how do we get the co-op model out there? How do we market that? That's our key differentiator. New Seasons can sell the same things that you do, but they can't be a cooperative. They don't have the same owner structure. And this is an important piece as well. So I think if you, if you really want to make this work, if you really want to get the use, the serve to, to matter, it has to be rooted in really uh, making sure that a cooperative model is a consideration for every decision, not just that there's some governance and then people will do whatever and we're going to run a store that just happens to be a co-op. Or, well, this is good enough. There really has to be something that threads through. And that requires education. So if we're going to make all this participation work, uh, do we, it's like uh, voting. We say voting, Michael Healy says, is not equivalent to democracy. It's not the only form of democracy. So if we just want to get the votes up, we could get a lot of no information and low information voters out there and really pack the ballot box. But what good is that, really? And it's the same with participation. If we're just, you know, it's about the numbers, it's about the metrics. What's the story behind those numbers? It's just as maybe more important than the numbers themselves. So we really have to think about those tensions, quantity and quality. Are we um, enhancing individual interest and identity or collective? You know, if we have imbalances, co-ops tend to have problems. It's not just association and enterprise. There's aspects within that. So I would like to see that use and serve are, I guess the best way I can frame this is, is that it's kind of a capitalist mindset to think about maximizing things. And I think when you think about maximizing, it's pathological. Even maximum participation can be a pathology. So we might say, What's optimizing? What's the kind of thing that really takes our identity and makes us the best co-op we can be, given our history and our culture, and, and really what we're going to bequeath intergenerationally? We've got to think about people who aren't here yet, too, when we think about these questions. It's not just about what we want. We're also creating a world someone else inherits. So uh, that's more or less how I think about it. I think use and serve is great, and I like to see it uh, really grow, but I don't like to see it grow so much outside of a strategic framework and understanding of what makes us distinctive. 